Hello, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to talk about pushing the boundaries with active storage. Specifically, using it to manage representations of files that are hosted on third-party services like Wistia. We'll also explore how to build a comprehensive media library enabling end users to manage their uploads and view them with ease. Before we dive into the technical details, I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Andrea Fermera. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a senior software engineer at Soundstripe, where I recently joined the team. I'd like to give a big shout, sound, sound, shout out to Soundstripe for allowing me to take some time out of my day to be here today. For those interested in connecting with me further, you can find my information at afermera.dev. And yeah, I can be found online at A from Air, anywhere that really matters. Before we get started, my slides move very quickly. There will be a link to the code, and then the slides will be available up shortly after this talk. Everything I'll be sharing today has been written specifically for this talk with the goal of inspiring you to explore new possibilities within your own projects with active storage. I hope you'll walk away with fresh ideas and practical techniques that you can immediately apply. First, let's talk about active storage. Let's define what active storage is and how it fits into a Rails application. According to the Rails guides, active storage facilitates uploading files to a cloud storage service like Amazon S3, Google Cloud Storage, Microsoft Azure Storage, and attaching files to active record objects. It comes with a local disk-based service for development and testing and supports mirroring and subordinate services for backups and migrations. That was a mouthful, but that was from the Rails guides. Put simply, Active Storage simplifies file uploads by extracting the complexity of working with different cloud storage providers while also supporting fo local file storage for development and testing environments. Behind the scenes, Active Storage relies on three main tables to manage to accomplish this. Active Storage blobs, Active Storage attachments, and Active Storage variant records. Blobs are the key representation of files we upload. Each blob is a record and active record that stores essential information about each file, such as its content type, byte size, and the actual file itself, a location of it. Attachments act as the bridge between your active record model and the blobs. When you attach a file to a record in your application, Active Storage creates an attachment that links it to the blob to the specific model instance. Variant records track variation of processed images. For example, if you need to resize an image to create a thumbnail or reduce its dimensions to a smaller dimension or larger, these variations can be stored in the table, assuming tracking is enabled. This allows for easier reference and management of different file versions. Now, how does this work in practice? In practice, typically applications use a uh, follow a one blob to one attachment relationship. If you need to associate the same file with multiple records, Active Storage will just upload a new file again as you upload it in the browser for each attachment, meaning a new blob is created each time behind the scenes. This behavior works well for most cases, but let's consider a scenario where your application is storing millions upon millions of files and your users are repeatedly uploading the same files. This redundant behavior leads to multiple blobs being created for identical files consuming unnecessary storage space and bandwidth. So the question becomes, is there a more efficient way to handle this? How can we make lives easier for our users and our infrastructure? Today we're gonna explore how building a media library can solve this problem, but before I dive into that, I wanna discuss building custom services with active storage. Active Storage is primarily known for managing files to the cloud storage providers like Amazon S3, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure. These services define how Active Storage interacts with these providers. But did you know you can create your own custom service to do, interact with different providers and handle different use cases? Today, we're gonna walk through the requirements for building your own custom service. As an example, let's look at how you can integrate Wistia, a video hosting platform, directly into your Rails application. 
And the code on the slide, which I know can be hard to see, <laughs> um, you can see that a custom service in Active Storage starts by inheriting from Active Storage Service. There are several key methods you need to define to get your custom service up and running. Upload, delete, download, download chunk, and public. These methods are the backbone of any Active Storage service and define how files are uploaded, retrieved, and managed in the service. Additionally, depending on the service, there are two private methods you may need to implement public URL and private URL. These methods control how generated URLs are generated for accessing files. For example, if the file is public, just return a direct link. If the file is private, you probably want to link with an expiration date. As you can see, each method currently implements a no method, no implemented error, <laughs> signaling we need to fill in the details based on our specific use case. Let's talk about implementing Wistia as a service. Video uploads will be handled by the front end using a JavaScript snippet that Wistia provides. And then deleting files will happen be via the back ends, an API request. Since Wistia handles the uploads directly via the JavaScript API, we don't need to perform any actions, so we'll just do a no operation or a no op here. We'll rely on their uploader. And the delete method will make a call to the Wistia API to remove the video. This operation could be deferred to a background job to ensure it doesn't slow down the user experience. Download and download chunk. For this case, videos are streamed directly from Wistia. We just skip these methods as well. We're going to embed the Wistia player with some HTML and JavaScript. And then for public, well, we can just assume videos are public. The next step is to handle the actual file upload using Wistia's uploader widget. Here's one way you could integrate the Wistia JavaScript API into your form. As a note, we're going to break all of the rules today and embed a token directly into it. <laughs> uh, so you shouldn't do this. You should use a short-lived expiring token. But why not? Let's break all the rules. We use the Wistia uploader widget to handle the file upload directly from the client side. We use a Wistia uploader success event. Once the file is successfully uploaded, Wistia will give us that event. And then we can pass the media ID and the name to the back end in a string of a format, Wistia colon hashed ID colon file name. This string will be parsed by the back end later on. As you can see, we've just seen an example of how to create a custom service in active storage and explored a small example with Wistia. This setup starts to push the boundaries of what active storage can do by integrating a third party service provider and creating a seamless experience for managing video files outside of the traditional storage system active storage typically works with. So the back end receives this param when it's submitted, but how do we actually handle this? Active Storage is looking for a signed ID and not the string. So I'd like to introduce a concept I'm calling Active Storage Providers. This is a concept that does not come with Active Storage, but I figured it was a clean way to wrap things up. What is a provider? Well, a provider by definition is something that makes a resource available for use. In this context, the provider is responsible for managing how files are uploaded, stored, and retrieved from different services. For example, we can make Wistia a provider and handle how the backend processes the string submissions we saw earlier when the video is uploaded. Let's take a look at this developer API that developers would use to integrate providers. As you can see, there's a has one attached with providers and then an array of the providers. This is very similar to the Active Storage API for managing services. We've introduced a new keyword argument, pro providers, which accepts an array of symbols. The logo field has two possible providers, Pexels and Media Library, which we'll talk about both in a minute. While the video field is configured to use the Wistia provider, this allows developers to easily switch between different sources based on different file sources. To implement this, 
we introduced a new concern called Active Storage Providers, which is an active support concern. This concern will be included in application record, allowing all models in our app to use this functionality seamlessly. Next, let's take a look at Active Storage Providers. In this code, we're monkey patching the has one attached method if options providers is present. We then add provider hooks by calling a method add provider hooks, and we store a hash for the providers with a specific attachment name that we can look up later when needed. Speaking of looking up providers when needed, we introduce a providers for class method that we've defined for this particular active storage association. This is where the providers for method comes into play. This method fetches any providers that have been defined for a given model and attachment name. To add the necessary functionality, we define the add provider hooks method. This method modifies the setter method for the attachment, ensuring that the correct provider is used to handle the attachments. And we just do a simple if statement here. I didn't say this was production ready code. Uh, if the value starts with Wistia colon, we handle it by calling create Wistia blob, which creates a blob in active storage for the video uploaded in Wistia. Otherwise, we fall back to the default behavior and pass the value to the original method, and active storage handles it like it's used to. Finally, let's look at the create Wistia blob method. This is where we parse the string provided by Wistia and save it to the active storage blob for future reference. In this method, we extract the WSTI ID and file name from the string, generate a checksum for the WSTI ID, and create a new active storage blob. This blob contains metadata that indicates it was uploaded via Wistia, which could be helpful for retrieval or deletion purposes later on. With active storage providers, we've introduced a flexible way for Rails developers to work with multiple storage providers for different attachments. This system makes it really easy to integrate with other third-party services like Wistia, Pexels, or even a custom media library into your application's file management, all while keeping the API simple and intuitive. The ability to define multiple providers opens up new possibilities for handling files in, your app, in a way that fits your app's unique needs, pushing the boundaries of what active storage can do. Now let's say we've all been there, requirements change, the product owner introduces a new requirement, and we want to add support for Pixels as a provider. If you're unfamiliar, Pixels is a platform offering a collection of free images, similar to Unsplash if you've heard of them, which also offers free images. However, one key difference between Pixels and Unsplash is Pixels allows you to download and serve files or exact from your direct allows you to serve files directly from your own servers, making it a great addition to our Wistia integration. To support Pexels, we can add the add provider hooks method to handle files coming from the Pexels API. This is how we would met, modify the method to account for Pexels. We added a con if condition to check if the string starts with Pexels, just like we did for Wistia. If it does, we call the create Pexels blob method, which is responsible for downloading and processing the files from Pexels. Next, we define the create pixels blob method to download the image from pixels, set its content type, and save it as an active storage blob. Here's what this method does. We take the URL, which it will be in a string of pixels colon the URL, and extract the URL after pixels. <laughs> then we download the file using open URI, open URI to download the file from the pixels URL. You probably want to look into some security aspects here if you've used this code. Uh, we use the Marcel gem to de determine the mime type of the file based on its content. And finally, we create and upload a new active storage blob using create and upload, storing the file's metadata, and lastly, returning the blob. Let's move on to the front end implementation of pixels. First, let me show you the final result because it's, why not, demo time. In this case, I have a form here, and I'm scrolling down to an upload component, and I'm either able to choose from uploading from my computer or searching pixels for free images. I'll search mountains. The images will show up. I can click one, or I can search for cars. Maybe I'll search for coffee. 
And yeah, that coffee looks good. Let's pick that one. Lastly, we'll create the article and behind the scenes, we downloaded the file and saved it to our active storage hosts. So how do we implement this? Well, we want users to be able to upload images to, to an active storage association and give them the option to choose from pixels. To enable this, we define a has one attached field and packs a pixels provider as follows. Just using the keyword argument we talked about earlier. To simplify the integration, we'll create a custom form builder, that helper method, that defines single image uploader, which will render a shared partial that includes the uploader logic. I won't be showing the full uploader logic today because it's kind of a mess, but you can look through the code afterwards. <laughs> In this helper, we pass local variables for providers using the providers form method we defined earlier. We render a shared partial that will contain the markup for the uploader. The single image uploader view includes a stimulus controller that wraps the uploader and manages the states. Users will have the option to upload an image from their computer or search images on pixels, assuming the pixels provider is enabled. When users click search pixels, a text input appears, allowing them to search for images. After entering at least three characters, a stimulus controller sends a request to a custom pixels controller. The pixels controller handles the API request to pixels. And here's that code. This controller, also a mess, <laughs> ex extracts the API key from the credentials, makes a request using a pixels client, and formats the response and returns a list of images as JSON, including the photo's URL, description, and photographer information. Once the stimulus controller receives the search results, it displays the images in a grid. When the user clicks on an image, the image URL is stored in a hidden field formatted as pixels colon photo URL. Submitting the form then triggers the backend to download the photo and save the blob. All right, that was a lot to take in, but the key here is just by making a few changes to Active Record, we've enabled seamless integration with external providers like Wistia and Pixels. These providers allow us to extend the functionality of file uploads and offer more flexibility to users all within the familiar Rails interface. If you're like me, you're thinking, that was a lot of work, but it's actually worth it. Once the providers are set up, you just reuse the functionality across your entire application. Next, I'm gonna talk about lessons learned while building a media library that allows users to search, view, and manage files they've uploaded. First up, another demo video of the media library. So here I'm searching for Andrew Mason, <laughs> hello. Um, I decided not to and I'm searching for videos now. If I click the video, you can see there's an embedded video player from Wistia. And then if I search for like a Pixels photo, you can see it embeds the full photo into the modal. You can download or you can delete. That photo's gone, bye bye. And then here it downloaded the file. The code I'm about to show you has not been fully tested in a production environment. So while it's functional for demonstration purposes, you may need to or wanna make adjustments for your own purposes. Before we dive into the implementation, let's revisit the two main tables in the active storage schema. Active storage blobs, which hold the representation of the file, including metadata such as the size, content type, and the service where the file is stored, like Amazon S3. And the attachments table establishes the association between your application's records and the blobs. It connects, for example, an article or user model with the uploaded file. Looking at the schema from a high level perspective, it makes sense to add a reference column, such as user ID, to the active storage attachments table. This would allow us to track which user uploaded a file, providing a way to filter files by user. An alternative approach maybe to create a media library object that has many attached files and use callbacks to automatically generate attachments whenever an active storage association is added. For example, you could define a method like attach to media library. 
This method would handle all of the logic to add a before save callback, look for the changed attachments, and automatically attach them to the media library. This is a more generic approach, and it probably will work very well. But today I want to focus on a simple MVP approach to validate the core functionality. For the MVP, we'll keep things simple by adding a user ID column to the active storage attachments table. This allows us to easily track which user uploaded each file. Here's how we can do this using a concern that's included with active storage into active storage attachment to automatically set the user association, leveraging current attributes and rails. We'll ensure that any time a file is attached, the current user is recorded, whether it's through a background job, a rake task, or a regular request. This concern adds a belong to association, which automatically populated the current user when an attachment is created. To ensure that our new logic is applied globally, we use active support on load to include the active storage user attachment concern in the attachment model. By doing this, we achieve two major benefits. We can track who uploaded each file, and we can query blobs based on the database. With this setup, querying the database to find all the blobs uploaded by a specific user is just a matter of joining the active storage attachments table, and here's how you might implement this. We join active storage blob with active storage attachments to find all the blobs created by the current user. We can add filters such as search by file name to allow users to search through their uploaded files. We order the results by created app to display the most recent files uploaded first. We now have a way to display all the blobs the user has uploaded in the media. These files can be listed, previewed, and managed directly from the user interface, providing a seamless experience for managing media. Building a media library with active storage can be quite straightforward by using the existing schema and just adding a custom bit of logic. By extending active record, active storage attachments <laughs> to track user uploads, we can now give users visibility into their own files allowing them to manage their media in a user-friendly way. This approach is minimal and scalable, and it can be ex further expanded to include advanced features such as file tagging, searching by metadata, or integrating with third-party storage providers. Here's another demo video. <laughs> in this case, I'm either uploading from my computer or choosing an existing file we've uploaded on the media library. And here's a Andrew Mason and then a car here. We'll pick Andrew's face, and there we go. When you select a file from the media library, the backend just receives the signed ID from the original blob and creates a new attachment. No need to go through the active storage provider's code. We'll just use a provider reference for the media attachment on the front end code so we can display the option. As I bring this train into the station, <laughs> I'd like to talk about a few things that I thought were interesting when it came up with using active storage and sc at scale. First, let's dive deeper into the search functionality I mentioned earlier, the search by file name method. This is a common need when working with files and attachments in active storage, especially when you've got a large number of assets. To accomplish this, we need a way to extend the active storage blob class and add the functionality for searching by file name. Let's take a look at the code, and then I'll walk you through step by step. Here, I'm defining a search by file name class method inside of the active storage scopes module. This method runs a SQL query to filter the active storage blob records by file name and return all if the file name is blank. We're using like in the SQL query to match any parts of the file name. This allows for partial matches and makes the search more flexible. Don't forget to include the scopes concern in active storage blob if you do this approach. In a previous role, we had a concept of well-known blobs. These were blobs the system would use for demo contents. We had to be sure they weren't deletable by end users. Also, in that role, we needed to prevent deleting of files on the file storage when it was hooked up to the production file storage. This posed an interesting problem. As such, one tip I learned was to just conditionally prepend the concern over, to override the delete method on the blob to accomplish this task. Some helpful things to know that might save you some debugging time if you go this route. 
adding a user ID to active storage attachments can be error prone if you don't have current user set in your background jobs. Don't forget to enable providers if you add them to your backend to get the front end to show up. And if you leave here and remember just a few things, I hope those things are, you can think outside the boundaries of frameworks provided by Rails with a little creativity, like enhancing an uploaded component with a pixel searching and selecting. Custom services can allow you to do new and unique things with active storage. Thank you for your time. It's been an absolute joy to speak here today, and I really appreciate your time. If anybody has questions or comments, feel free to come find me after the talk. You can find my, the slides at aframeradapdev slash speaking and a link to the repo on my GitHub. Or you can find me online at Twitter, and I'll be posting this information later. Thank you so much. <laughs>